Hey folks, Chris Van Deviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Now this video is part two in a three-part series on my journey of finding what I believe is the best audio interface available for Logic Pro users. Now in the first video, I you know discussed my journey of trying out different interfaces, trying to determine what is the best audio interface for Logic users, and I even chose one over the famed Apollo Twin X from Universal Audio, which is an amazing interface, great stuff. But I ended up choosing the Apogee Element instead. And I really do believe that the Apogee Element, much of the Apogee line, is the best option us Logic users have for an audio interface that integrates tightly, not just with Logic, but with Mac systems in general. It's pretty amazing. So I just wanted to walk through a couple of the key features that I really love about it. It's not an exhaustive tutorial. Apogee has their own tutorials, but I wanna show you some of the cool ways that the element ties into Logic and your Mac. So if you decide to buy any of the Apogee interfaces, I'm pretty sure like the symphonies, the new desktop symphony, the element, the ensemble, they all make use of the Apogee control app, which is what you would download once you have your Apogee interface hooked up to your Mac. The Apogee control app is much like an audio software mixer that we're all very much used to with any other audio interface. It allows us to conduct direct monitoring if we are working with a project that has a ton of plugins, instruments, lots of routing. We have a buffer size that's set to maximum 1024 and we can't make it smaller just because our system can't handle it. So you need a way to directly monitor the signal without latency. But this app also allows us to control parameters of the audio interface of the element. Because if you took a look at the element, there's no controls on it. So you have to control it from within your Mac. This app allows us to control it, but you'll see very shortly that once you have a couple things set up, you may never need to return to this app ever again. It's kind of awesome. So on each individual channel strip here, we have like analog one and two because there's two inputs on this particular interface. We have the preamp volume so we can drive up the signal. We can also turn phantom power on and off. We can also invert the polarity of the signal right here. There's also a soft limit option. So in case you happen to hit the top of the meter by accident while you're recording, you have this option to kind of like softly smooth out the transient so you don't get that nasty distortion. And we can even group the different tracks together as well. But what I want to point out to you is two specific features that blew my mind. Number one, we have the ability to control the main output to our speakers or monitors right over here. So you can drive it up or down. You can also drive the headphone output up or down right here. Here's where things get cool. Over here, you can choose to designate the volume keys on your Mac's keyboard. So you know when you turn the volume up or down on your system here, like that? You can actually designate those particular keys to either output. So check it out. So I'm gonna set it to speaker, and then we'll go over here, and I'm recording a video right now, so my output is set to Telestream, but we'll set it to the element. Now check it out. I'm able to turn the playback volume with just my Mac's keyboard. It's pretty awesome. Then if we go over here and set it to the headphones, it does exactly the same thing. I really love this feature. In my studio, I have a monitor controller, so I don't necessarily need to set this up and down all the time. I just use the volume control on my monitor controller. But for the headphones, I very much appreciate this option. So I can turn the headphones way down so I don't accidentally blow someone away, you know, when they're first putting on the headphones and I hit play and, you know, that can be a scary circumstance. Okay, we'll set this back over here. The other option that blew my mind is that we can designate a talkback microphone with the element. So check it out. Maybe you're working with a musician who's in the other room and you need to be able to talk to them through their headphones. You could use one of the inputs on your element, have a microphone plugged into the interface, you know, you can talk to them in between takes. Or you can designate your Max microphone as the talkback mic. So if you have an iMac, a MacBook, something that has a microphone on it, and you know you can conduct FaceTime calls, Skype calls, you can use that microphone as the talkback mic. So check it out, then we can click over here, and I'm, I'm talking, talking through, through the, the talkback talk mic to myself, myself right, right now. now. It's awesome, I can't believe it. Okay, let's move on to Logic. Now many of us have maybe seen a certain set of controls within the mixer or inspector, 
and have wondered what the heck is going on over here? What is all this? Well, these are the audio device controls. They allow you to control your audio interface from within Logic. And as far as I know, Apogee is like the only company that takes advantage of this. Blows my mind. I can't believe this. There's a huge Logic base out there. Why are audio interface companies not taking advantage of this? So I'm so glad that at least Apogee is. So the audio device controls allow us to adjust a couple different parameters related to the element, much like the Apogee control app. So first we can pick the style of input. So if you're plugging a microphone in, obviously you would want a mic input. Maybe you're plugging your guitar in to use like amp designer with. In that case, you would pick instrument. Or if you have some outboard gear that you're gonna plug into the element, so an outboard preamp, maybe a compressor, whatever, you would use one of these line levels instead. Okay, so we'll leave it on microphone. Next up, we can turn phantom power on and off from within logic. So again, if you have a condenser mic, you're plugging it in, you need some phantom power, boom, easy. We can also flip the polarity of the signal, just like that. And then we can also drive up the preamp gain, so the volume for the input on your audio interface, like this. It is so awesome. I never have to look at the Apogee Control app if I don't want to. Now, in some cases, we're working with a project. It's huge. Lots of plugins, lots of instruments. Buffer size is set to a big size, 1024, but we need to record another track. How are we going to do this without any latency? We'll check it out. I'm going to record enable this channel strip, which my vocal mic is hooked up to right now. We're going to hear latency, and then I'm going to go press that direct button towards the top. Okay. okay. So, there's so there's some, some latency. latency. It's kind, kind of hard, hard to talk, to talk through. through. And now there's no latency at all. It's like that amazing. So in this case, we're able to get direct monitoring for the specific channel strip without having to deal with an outside mixer. And you can even set it on a channel by channel basis. So if you have like the element 88 that has eight inputs, you can actually turn on direct monitoring for channel one leave it off for two and three, and then turn it on for four. It's so cool. So this rounds it out. Like you have the ability to tightly integrate this interface with your Mac system, with Logic. And if you do decide that you need to dig into the Apogee Control app, oh man, I forgot I got to do something. Go up to Mix and open Apogee Control Panel. So cool. Okay, now in the next video, the final video of this three-part series, I want to show you one other thing that makes the element awesome and that's the dual path effects. This allows you to have your cake and eat it too. Be able to record with zero latency, but with plugins, with EQs, with compressors, so you're processing the track, so you're getting that vibe and getting that sound that you're after. See you then.